Welcome to the short and sweet yin practice to open up the front of our body. For this practice, you will need a block, or if you don't have a block, you can use just a towel. You roll it up firmly and you put some rubber bands around it just to kind of keep it in place. It just needs to be a nice firm towel. So, um, and depending on the space that you have in the front of the body, it might be a little bit bigger or it might be a little bit smaller. So you can see the towel that I've used is almost as high as the block. So a towel is just as good as a block. I'll be using the block. The block is a higher block. Some blocks are a little bit narrower. I prefer the higher blocks. But then again, if you have a lot of tightness in the front body, then it might be better for you to use a lower block or to use a smaller towel. Opening up into the front body, our first pose that we start in is a pose where we're sitting onto our knees. Now we have a couple of options here. Um, for me, it's okay to sit in between my feet. That's okay for my knees. That might not be okay for you. In that case, you want to sit onto your block. From here, we're going gently backwards. You can go back as far as you feel is good. This could be enough. Maybe this is enough. If you have your hands like that, it's going to be really strong. So I want you to have your hands at least flat down onto the ground. You can have them fingers out to the side, forward, whatever feels right for you. If you have more space, if your knees are okay, you can go deeper. You can go onto your forearms, for example, or you can go and lay all the way down onto your back, which I'm going to show the moment I have started the timer. So we're releasing down as far as you feel is right. I want you to feel the stretch into the quads and your hip flexors. That's your legs where we start in this practice. Because your legs are folded back, it's hard to stretch deeper. If you're all the way down and you have a lot of comfort here, you really go like, oh, I don't know, like this doesn't do a lot for me. What you can do is bring the block underneath your hips to elevate the hips more, making it much stronger in practice, this pose. So we're just laying down here. It's our saddle pose in the depth that we feel is right. Now soften as much as you can, release. This is a yin practice. I've brought my hands behind my head. I quite like that sensation. You're welcome to bring your hands out, up overhead, cactus shape next to your hips, onto your belly, whatever works for you. I like to open up gently into my chest as well, into this pose. And so now we're just releasing, we're letting go and as I'm sure you can see in my practice in my body is that I have a lot of space into the lower back. This actually indicates tightness in the psoas muscle. You can see how much space I can bring my fist sideways. So what I want to do as I'm laying here is I want to gently tilt my hips backwards so that my lower back can sink down towards the ground. And when I do that, I feel more stretch, much more stretch into my quads, the front of my thighs and my hip flexors. Yep, so I don't want to have that back bend. I want to try to release the back bend, try to stretch. And when I do that, the pose becomes much stronger. You feel in your body what you need. If you want to intensify, then you can. If you feel it's too strong, then you kind of find a variation that works for you where you're higher up through the shoulders. The stretch needs to go into the front of the thighs and the front of the hips. Soften, become aware of tension that you're holding in your body and see if you can let that tension just go. Just opening up here, we're releasing. We're finding our maximum range of motion, but not by forcing, not by pushing, but just by releasing and by letting go. That's the practice of yin. That's what we all the time come back to, all the time, coming back to those layers and layers of tension that we build up in our body. Most of the time we're not even aware of it. And we just kind of release into that, we sink into it, we soften, we feel all the weight pressing down into the earth. And the more weight presses down, the more opening we can find. So in yin, there's no guidance for the breath. But I really like to focus more on my exhalation and feel that each exhalation softens me more, opens me up more. And there's the bell. So however you feel it's right for you, you come up and then you release. In this practice, in this short and sweet practice, we have 
briefer rebounds. Rebounds are just a minute, as opposed to three minutes. If it's a rebound after the rebound, you feel that you just need a little bit more time, then you can just pause. As you're releasing now, just feel into the knees and the thighs and the hips. Feel the sensation there. For me, it feels cool today. Sometimes it feels tight still coming out. Sometimes it feels warm or tingly. Just kind of feel into it. All the fluids are running back into this area, and that's what you feel. Find softness, softness in your hips. Feel that you're not pushing back. And so you're welcome to pause for a moment longer if you feel that that's right, or you pick up onto your block now, and we bring the block underneath the hips for our supported back bend. So I'll show you in the lowest setting, but you can bring the block in a medium or the highest setting as well. Once the block is in place, you straighten your legs out. Now the block is underneath the sacrum. The sacrum is the hips. So the block is not in the small of the back, and it's not too far down underneath the tailbone. Both of that feels very uncomfortable. It is just under the sacrum, underneath the hips. I straighten the legs out. So for, my, for me, I can bring my legs down. A but I can bring the block up. I'll bring it in a medium setting for today. I'll get it in the right position. Most of the time, we have to bring it further back towards our heels. Straightening the legs out. Now we get the opening, the space into the belly area a little bit. The hips themselves, the real stretch into the hip flexors and still maybe a little bit into the quads front of the legs. The hands can go up overhead if that feels good, or you can keep them out to the side, or you can bring them next to your hips. It's also nice for some people to kind of release, interlace the hands behind the block and get that little bit of a stretch into the shoulders. I prefer to have my hands up overhead, working a little bit more on shoulder flexibility. And then we're just sinking down here. We allow the weight of the hips to sink into the block. 35 muscles moving over the sacrum, and so that's what we're pressing into, the attachment of these muscles. Very beneficial, this stretch for the lower back, especially if you suffer from a lower back pain. There's a lot of benefits doing this pose. And as it is with any yin pose, you never want to do a pose more than three times a week. Even that, I believe, is pushing it a little bit. Most of the time, two times a week, Doing the same pose is very beneficial. If you have a lot of tightness in an area, you might choose to do it three times. And what you will see is very soon your body begins to open up. These stretches go into the fascia, not into the muscles. Well, they go into the muscles as well. But this is not really how our muscles stretch. Our muscles are like rubber bands going in and out. And here we're stretching deep into the fascia, into our connective tissue, just allowing that to open up. Keep on releasing, keep on sinking down through the hips, letting go of tension, tightness, replacing it with softness and space. Keep on letting go. Become aware of tension. Most of the time, tension just sneaks into our body without us even noticing. So we have to go over our body, let it go. Softness in the hips, softness in the belly, softness in the back. Feel the weight of the shoulders pressing down into the ground. Feel the weight of the heels. And very gently walking your feet in, taking the weight of the block, releasing the shoulders first, and then taking the weight of the block and laying down into your rebound, straightening your legs back out and just feeling here the sensations into the hips, the lower back, and feel what's happening in front of the body. So whenever we open up into the front, we shorten through the back. So you will feel both sides of your body, especially here. 
Then notice your hips. Sometimes it feels like your hips are sinking down into the ground more. Sometimes it feels like there's space underneath. Maybe some tingling or tightness or warmth or coolness. Just kind of feel what's happening in the hips. And then our last pose for that we come up. We use the block again. We bring the block this time behind us, widthwise onto the mat. We bring ourselves in a position so that the shoulders, the tips of the shoulders more or less come onto the block. We bring the hands behind the head to start and we just kind of wriggle a little bit, giving ourselves a massage, going a bit from side to side. And then very slowly as we are supporting the head, we're just sinking down. In the end, we want to have the hands onto the ground. If that feels it's too deep, you can always rest your hands like that or use a towel underneath. If it is okay, then you release your head down. And again, your arms can go up overhead. They can out to the side in any position, or you can bring them next to your hips. This time, I'm going to leave them next to my hips. I allow the tips of the shoulders to kind of sink down in the direction of the earth. Feel now the space arriving into my chest, opening up into the front of the heart as the block is pressing down into the back space of the heart. Making sure that there's no pressure into the neck or into the throat. It should feel okay. If it isn't okay, you can, as I mentioned before, you can just like this, for example, use your hands. That creates a little bit of support. You can also keep your elbows in, in this position. Just so that there's no tension in the back of the neck as we're opening up into the thoracic part of the spine, the upper back. So just feel, you can also use not a block underneath the head. Keep on sinking down, keep on letting go. Allowing the chest to open up, to release. Direct your breath upwards a little bit more into the chest to help with the space in the opening. Keep on directing the breath upwards. Resting the trunk into the block. Feel how the tips of the shoulders are sinking down. Oh, there it is, the bell. So you reach back with your hands. You bring them behind the head. You lift your head up. Just give yourself a nice little stretch here, chin towards your chest. And then from here, you can roll over to the side. Keep on holding on to your head, removing the block. Bring it out to the side, laying down for your last rebound. Feel into the space that's there behind the heart. Keep on opening up into that space. Sinking down into the earth. And here you just have the choice. You can stay here for as long as you like at any time that you feel ready. You can move off your mat. Thank you for sharing your practice with me. Namaste.